Ring doorbells were leaking customer Wi-Fi credentials, Apple has a plain text email problem, and hacking IoT devices with lasers. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for November 12, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire. It is because of the generosity of all of you fine people out there that watch this show that I am able to make it each and every week, so thank you very much. I appreciate you. And now, on to the news. In a report by security company Bitdefender, disclosure of a vulnerability vulnerability in the Ring video doorbell went public. The flaw was first made public on Thursday after Ring had a chance to implement an automatic update. With the flaw, an attacker could gain access to the Ring doorbell owner's Wi-Fi credentials. So this affects the Ring video doorbell pro cameras, which are internet connected wireless home security doorbells that have video recording capabilities. This can happen due to the way Ring's app communicates with the device. The app sends the Wi-Fi network login info over to the device upon first setup, but it's sent over unencrypted HTTP, so anyone could easily snoop on the Wi-Fi credentials and the password for your home network. Bitdefender explained that the Ring device creates its own access point without a password. Once that's set up, the app automatically connects, queries the device, and it sends the wireless network credentials over to it via plain text HTTP, so anyone nearby could see your SSID and your password. Word. This does appear to be the only part that is sent via HTTP. All the other API data sent to and from the device is sent via the more secure TLS protocol. The attacker would need to be within wireless range, so this would not be implemented remotely. It only works during initial setup, but unfortunately, the attacker could send deauth attacks to the user, tricking them into setting up the doorbell all over again. The deauthentication attacks would kick the Ring doorbell off the local Wi-Fi, which can stick it back into configuration mode, triggering the need to reconnect it via the app. The attacker would need to wait around until the user noticed that the smart door camera went offline Line, but once they initiated the connection again, the app would just resend those credentials over HTTP all over again encoded in XML. This could open up the home network to an attacker, allowing them to install malicious malware, steal data, or snoop on other connected devices like other IoT products, laptops, phones, even your TV. Bitdefender did have some trouble getting this reported to Amazon, the owners of the Ring doorbell. They first reported the vulnerability in June, didn't hear back until mid June. July, they sent in the report through the HackerOne bug bounty program, sent another reminder at the end of July, and then Amazon closed the report in mid-August, marking it as a duplicate report. Bitdefender got into conversations with Amazon in early September, at which point an update was eventually implemented. Now, according to Bitdefender and Ring, a patch was implemented in September and sent as an automatic update. If you do have a Ring camera, update it ASAP. And to take matters into your own hands, put IoT devices on a secondary network or a guest network, and if possible, set up your home network for device whitelisting as well. An Apple IT specialist recently discovered a problem with macOS computers that allows emails that are supposed to be stored with S-MIME encryption to be left stored in readable text within the operating system. Bob Gendler found out all about this flaw when he was exploring how Siri in macOS makes suggestions for information and contact data that is sent to a user. He found a folder of data deep within the system, which was used for storing database files, some of which had data about Apple Mail and other applications used to improve Siri and OS suggestions. One of these database files stored his email completely unencrypted, even though emails are supposed to be encrypted with S-MIME. Secure multi-purpose internet mail extensions is generally used as a protocol for sending digitally signed and encrypted messages, like email. Gendler found that while Siri was disabled, this data was still stored. Gendler informed Apple on July 29th 
defined and the problem has still not been fixed. Affected users would need to be using macOS with Apple Mail, sending encrypted messages without File Vault turned on. Now, while the affected users may not notice or worry since the plain text messages are just stored locally, this could be an issue if you are traveling abroad or for developers or employees or contractors for governments or corporations who have access to trade secrets or proprietary data. This affects macOS versions from Sierra all the way up to Catalina. If you are worried about unencrypted email being stored on your machine, you can set this up, go into System Preferences, Siri, Siri Suggestions, and Privacy, and then you can uncheck Apple Mail. This can also be disabled via a terminal command, which I will link down below, or via a new configuration profile, which disables Siri's ability to learn from Apple Mail. Only the third option there permanently disables email scraping, even though after an OS update, you generally wouldn't see that happen. Users can find this file within the user's username library suggestions directory. And also turning on File Vault does encrypt everything on your machine. Now, according to Apple, a fix will be deployed in a future patch and only portions of emails are stored, not the entire emails, but those are still portions of what should be encrypted messages. Before we hit story number three, I want to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I am putting together the annual physical rewards for this year throughout the month of November, so keep an eye on the updates on the Patreon page. Also, also, I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed for the public. That is my next Patreon goal. So if you want to check it out, if you want to help, check out my community down below. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you will automatically get a physical reward after your first year of membership and every year thereafter. Also, a huge thank you to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them so very much. Make sure to keep them coming. They're adorable. Voice activated IoT devices can be hacked again. Security researchers based in Tokyo and at the University of Michigan have discovered that smart speakers like the Amazon Echo and the Google Home can be activated with frickin' lasers. You heard me right. The team found that they could trick these devices into doing things like opening a garage door by shooting a laser through a window at a vulnerable device if in direct line of sight. They used focus lasers and telephoto lenses for this hack, along with specifically crafted amplitude modulation that produces acoustic pressure waves. The researchers explained that microphones in these devices convert voice commands into electrical sounds and signals. And since a laser's beam can be programmed to send certain acoustic pressure waves, the speaker will sense that and respond to it as if it's receiving a voice command. This can allow an attacker to open a garage door, they can start a car, they can order things online and troll you, they could control other smart gadgets, just to name some of the potentials. And even worse, this works on other devices too. The researchers tested this on the iPhone XR, a Pixel 2, and the Samsung Galaxy S9, but in each of these cases, they had to be within close proximity. Basically, any device that uses the MEMS microphones or the microelectric mechanical system mics for voice activation and performs actions based on the input, those might be vulnerable. They were able to test this from about 230 feet away on a Google Home, and the actual range depends on the strength of the laser, the light intensity, aiming capabilities, physical barriers, and the absorption of ultrasonic waves in the air. The total gear needed was well under a grand. Now, since none of the device makers have actually come up with a solution to this problem, the researchers recommend keeping your device out of sight from potential attackers and limiting the device's access to other products. Products. Now, before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Bashish, Shane, Stephen, Paul, Roberto, Anoitz X, I don't know how to say your username correctly, Gianluca, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.